So I'm out here at a job today in Lilyfield, Sydney, and uh, it's for a builder client of ours. And they've chopped through uh, some link cables that link the buildings together. So you've got the MDF in that room there, uh, the main frame where the telecommunications is coming. But these are underground Cat 6 cables. Now they're not using the transmit data, they're using them um, just for like uh, internet lines, phone lines. First, it looks like from what I can view that they're both coming back to here. Right, with a little iron frame there, and then from there, they're tapping out the garden. The normal underground cat fives and cat sixes, I mean, not underground, uh, internal cat five, cat six, into these buildings. So, this building's out, and this building's out. And then the other end. I've done through another cable there too. Take a look at it. It doesn't look like a communications cable, that one. We'll see once we get more light up and everything's working. And then the other one's in this little hidey hole here. And there's a little frame there. And then from there, it goes out. You can't see underneath here. I'll put some lights on there. You've got these blue ones going out. And they're going up to the... Uh, to the different, uh, to the MDF frame actually. Right, so that's the job at hand for today. So first thing I want to do is identify, because where they've chopped them, I don't know which one of these cables joins me, which one of those cables, so it's at the left. I want to do it how they're coming out of the conduit, because I imagine that's the best way to do it, because they're lying pretty flat. The way I see it, you got these two coming out there like that, so they're not twisted. And you've got these two coming out like that. So I'm going to join the right one with the right one, the left one with the left one. There's no real way of knowing, you know. So not until I've hooked it all up, and then if they go, you know, Jan's got the wrong phone number on a phone or something like that, or whatever problems, then we can deal with that later. And I'll just swap those over at the uh, at the crane frame. But for now, this is what we're going to do: pull in brand new cables. Um, brand new underground cap sixes and repair this conduit then connect it all up all right all right so i'm under here now trying to work out the um how they're wired so i've got my blue white pair on the one that's on the left hand side that's coming to there and they've got it all backwards how yeah, they've got this connected you see here pair number one they've started on started on pair three and it's gone blue green brown then orange but it should be blue orange green brown they've done it all the way so i want to keep it exactly how they've done it so um with a bit of luck everything just once i've put the cables in it all just works so first thing i'm going to do is we're working on this one here okay so that's the cable i've got my toner on the other end and i'm going to chop all four of those cables Right, so I can keep how they're connected. Right, so we'll chop the blue off, green off, right, the brown off, and then the orange off. Well, right, so now when I bring the new cable in, we'll connect those patterns straight back up to the same pattern here. And then what I'll do now is I'm going to buzz that back the opposite way and do the same on the other frame. And then we'll marry everything up exactly how it was. Okay, so that's the toner. That's the one I just chopped on the other end. And then here, we're gonna do the same on the one that's coming out of the left-hand side here. And I'm hoping that one and that one, they were the ones that were connected before they were damaged. So, to buzz this one out too, we'll work it out. Well, not entirely unexpected, but here, it's wired differently again. So now you've got blue, orange, green, brown. The correct way, starting at number five. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do one cable at a time. Okay, make life easy. So, I'm going to snip these suckers off here again, too, because that's coming out of this cable here. All right, that's this one. So, snip these guys off. That one, that one, that one, and that one. And now, I've 
got that. So we don't want that falling back down the conduit like that. So now we'll get our cable and start pulling it through. So now I've taped on my um, new cable to the damaged cable. And also, because I'm pulling one through at a time, I've put some tape around the second cable so that doesn't pull into the conduit so I lose the end of it. That's pretty important to do that. So I'll pull it in. So unfortunately, nothing's ever that easy in life. So uh, there's a 90 degree bend down under here, which comes to a bend here, which would go into a bend in there, which is then it's going to a bend in here. So basically, to get it through, you're going to have to bring it here, get enough length here, and then we'll put it in through the wall. Um, the new hole, the hole I have is just way too small. Uh, yeah, fun continues. All right, so <clears throat> I've decided I'm going to pull two through this way first and then do two through that way. Reason being is because I've got to repair this conduit as well. And then I will just make it too difficult because I'm by myself in, uh, to feed it and to do it all like, through another conduit which I sort of need to leave a little bit of overlap. It's just a pain in the backside. Anyway, this will work a lot better. So I've marked the first one number one. Now I'm going to mark this one number two and so I don't get them confused as to where they go. Okay, so I've pulled it up through all here now, both the cables, and I put the uh, bend back on. And now they're popping through the little hole there. So that's this side done with the new cables. That should be plenty of length to get it up to that frame there. All right, so uh, next bit. Thank you, Doki. So they didn't have the right conduit. Um, to marry up to this one, they had a couple of mil to 20 mil, but that's actually 25 mil grey. So I have to go down to Bunnings and pick up some of that. <coughs> um, so yeah, so I've got my bit on with the joint now. And we'll tie those ends to here and pull those through with a little line here. Fun times. There we go. That's success. Got the cables popping out in here. Feed on, and then I can just put that conduit in, and that's uh, we'll repair that section, all right. And that's just how good I am. So now <laughs> that's a perfect measurement there. So I'm just going to whack a bit of glue on the ends here, a bit of the um, old PVC cement, and we'll um, glue those all on, and then that's just part done, all right. So that's all glued up now. now you can see how low that conduit is. I'm not surprised they went into it. It's probably only about maybe 20 mil, 30 mil. Not much they've left. Uh, you can see here the difference between your standard Cat 6 cable and uh, this Cat 6 cable is there's like a grease inside there which keeps out moisture. So this is the stuff you can put underground and if it does get a little bit damp then it's not going to affect the internal parts of the cable because you've got this like grease stuff here to keep it out. That's why we use uh, Cat 6 Underground when you're doing anything in conduits underneath the soil. Alrighty, one down, so that's all terminated there now. So I've terminated exactly the same way as it was before. So this one was the blue, orange, green, brown, and the other one is just mixed up. So we're keeping them exactly the same. So when everything goes back on, it all should just work out there before. All right, so that's it. I've terminated the end underneath the building here now. Um, exactly the same pattern as how they had it, which is uh, odd to the other pattern. So yeah, I'm just not gonna correct it. Just gonna leave it as it is, because who knows what it might stuff up. So that's pretty much it now. Uh, that one's done. So getting, uh, repairing uh, underground Cat 6 cables.